Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference for Triangle of Sadness in competition at the Cannes 2022 Film Festival. I will introduce our guests, starting next to me with the immensely wealthy, the Henrik Drosen, who plays the immensely wealthy and generous and equally socially awkward Jorma. <laughs> At the other end of the table, someone you'll all recognize, he plays Dimitri, the East European manure magnet, manure magnet, Zlatko Boric. <laughs> Next to him, a writer and actress in the role of Paula, the ship's, uh, the ship's chief steward and martinet, Vicky Berlin. in the role of Abigail, the toilet cleaner, whom fate catapults to power, and the woman you would like to have with you if you're ever shipwrecked, yes. Dolly de Leon. <laughs> Next, three-time Academy Award nominee, four-time Golden Globe nominee, and seven eight-time uh, Emmy Award nominee, and Emmy Award winner, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> and uh, in case you haven't noticed it, you might want to pick up the uh, Daily Mail because there's a photo spread of Woody showing his abs. <laughs> Next to him. Charles B. Dean, who's making her debut acting uh, performance on the big screen in the role of Yaya. In the role of Carl, his breakout performance was in Eliza Hitman's Beach Rats, and he's gone on to star in such varied films as The King's Man and The Souvenir Part Two, Harris Dickinson. And finally, the film's director, scriptwriter, editor. He was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film for his previous film, 2017's The Square, which of course won the uh, Palme d'Or in Cannes. His previous film, Force Majeure, won the uh, Certain Regard Jury Prize in 2014, Ruben Ousland. Welcome back. We don't have room for everyone up here, but I'd like to introduce a couple of uh, members of the cast and cr uh, crew who were sitting in the first row. I'll start at the far end with the film's producer, Eric Hemmendorf. <laughs> Next to him in the role of the engine room hand or pirate, we're never sure exactly which, uh, <laughs> Jean-Christophe Folly. And uh, finally, actress Sonia Meles. <laughs> While you're all catching your breath, I will begin the press conference by asking Ruben what attracts you to fashion and the world of fashion. <coughs> Oi. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that eight years ago, I met my wife, uh, Sina, and she is a fashion photographer. So when we met, I just wanted to know everything about uh, the fashion industry, and uh, uh, we started to talk a lot about uh, um, how the fashion industry is marketing their products and the condition of the, the models when they're working, and talking about beauty as a currency. Uh, and I, I felt that at the same time when we started to talk about this, that beauty is attractive, but it's also scary. Uh, and beauty is, is, is uh, beauty is setting the hierarchy so much. So uh, that was really the starting point. And what about the world of fashion? What uh, is it about that? that uh... <clears throat> well, I can tell you one thing that I think is super interesting with, uh, with how uh, fashion is uh, 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 the strategy of the marketing. And, uh, it comes from uh, research about zebras in the savanna. And there was a, a scientist that was looking at the zebras in the savanna uh, and tried to spot one individual of the zebras in a herd. And it turns out it's really, really hard uh, because uh, the zebras is just disappearing. 
Uh, and then they sprayed a red dot on the fur of one zebra, and then it was possible to spot it, but immediately it got taken by lions. Uh, and so this scientist was drawing parallel to the fashion industry that the, the camouflage of the zebra is not to disappear in the savanna, it's actually to disappearing in the herd. And fashion works in the same way. Uh, we are very aware of which social group we are connected to and how we dress in order to blend into that social group so we're not uh, uh, spot, uh, popping out too much. And uh, so the fashion industry, of course, it's great to have a new collection coming out in fall and a new collection coming out in spring, because then we have to consume more clothes in order to not uh, pop out in the herd. So uh, this, these things from a sociological, behavioristic point of view uh, was an approach I had when I started to look at the fashion industry. Thank you. There are lots of questions, so I'm going to open it up to the floor. Jason, in the center. Hello, this is Jason Gore from Canada. Ruben, we could talk about Thorstein Veblen and consumption and Hegel and Marx, and we can go a deep philosophical dive, but I want to talk about how your film is really fucking funny. Great. <laughs> and, and, and I want to talk about this, because I think people come to Ken looking for films that are serious and not realizing that funny is smart. And so if you could talk about as a director of bringing incredibly intensely philosophical ideas to a framework of entertainment, and as performance, especially Woody in particular, you've made a career of showing that sometimes stupid can be very smart, and that sometimes being clever, <laughs> and, that, and, that, and, that, and that underneath it all. But as performance, if you could talk about setting that line that, that you're not going too far, that you're taking something serious and seeing the silliness, but also taking the silliness and showing that sometimes it's life and death. Lots of questions, but if the uh, first the director and then the performance, if you could talk about but finding that balance. Thank you so much for asking that question, because I think that have been a goal for, for us with this film that we wanted to create like a roller coaster for adults and uh, something that is entertaining and challenging and funny and to really use the cinema for what it's it's to use for you know like to have an experience together and when you leave the cinema afterwards you should be like what what have happened you know and you have something to talk about and we wanted to get away of, like we were doing test screenings, you know, and I wanted to get away from the audience that is sitting like this, hmm, now I should react in a smart way because someone is watching me, you know, uh, yeah, and then afterwards like, hmm, yeah, the film have a problem, you know, uh, uh, and I wanted to bring in an audience, I was doing a, a test screenings, we were doing in Berlin and in Stockholm, and now also on the countryside in Spain, and it was so great to go to the countryside of Spain, where we had uh, uh, 30 people, uh, that have no experience of cinema and just bring them in and they were like laughing and screaming straight out and you know and I was like finally you know an audience that is uh, giving something back and I think that we also have to remind ourselves that we Europeans are very often not a good audience we sit with our arms crossed like this and like okay let's see what happens and we forget that we are part of the show we are part of the performance so when you go to US and have screenings there the audience is like wow and okay then you can talk about the content of the film but we, we have a responsibility to create a great screening. And that was so beautiful yesterday. Uh, uh, it was so beautiful because people were applauding during, like, it was a football game, someone told me. It was a football <laughs> game going on. And when uh, Dolly's character is, like, taking over the control, they're like, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> uh, so, and, and this is the goal with the movies that we are going to make in the future also. We are combining the best part of the European cinema that is intellectual, that is trying to say something about society, with the best part of the American cinema that is like, okay, if we don't make this film successful, we don't have any job anymore, and we can't support our children, and they can't go to college, you know, like, this, this two kind of pressure, and really create cinema that makes it like, fucking, I want to go to the cinema. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Applaud. <laughs> Woody, anything to add, to, since you were referencing the question? Anything to add to that? Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't know I'd made a career out of uh, just barely keeping stupid into the funny realm. Uh, but thank you for that. <laughs> no, I, anyway, it's an honor to be a part of this. I, I think Ruben is just a master at, uh, at, at doing what you said. He can make you extremely uncomfortable. He can make you think. He can give you a, a sense of uh, meaning 
and it, like there was a purpose to going to see the film and at the same time and uh, perhaps more importantly he makes you laugh throughout which is quite a trick <laughs> thank you question on the right <laughs> That's how we end everything. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Marcus. I uh, work for One Press TV. I uh, just want to say, Ruben Eslund, welcome back to Cannes. Um, I want to ask um, Woody Harrison a question. First, I want to say, big fan of your movie, White Men Can Jump. You're hilarious in, in the one. Never stop acting. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to this one. Uh, triangle of Sadness. Um, what caught your interest to being part of this movie? And uh, how did you get in contact with Ruben? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, Ruben is a maestro, so uh, my interest was to work with Ruben, certainly, uh, but someone asked me, I, I think, and uh, I didn't contact him and say, put me in your next film, but I'm going to be in his next film, whether he wants me to or not. Uh, but. Anyway, it, it, it's, once you read this script, it was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. You're going to play a captain on an airplane the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I can briefly tell it's it's a long haul flight. The title is The Entertainment System is Down. I think you get it, right? <laughs> Need a chief stew for that? Of course. <laughs> Shelby and Harris, I'd like to ask both of you a question. What do you think of uh, the society, of the, of the role that beauty plays in our social hierarchies, and what has it meant for you? I think coming from a fashion background, I definitely have an inside scoop into it, and it does play a role in it, whether you are aware of it or not, and you see that in this film, and I think what makes it so interesting is in real life we do have a currency, whether it's our wealth or our beauty or our influence or our power, and then you're put into a situation where that currency is of no longer value, and then who are you? What do you bring to the table? And will you be eaten first? Mm. So. I mean, my character Carl very much knows where he stands in that sense. I think he, <laughs> he, he, he uses it to his advantage. And I think it's, uh, it's something I, uh, I, I, you know, I value him for doing it. It's like, uh, I think uh, Ruben uh, it, it makes very astute points about human behavior. And I think he's, Incredibly observant and being uh, being a part of those conversations are uh, informative and and and, uh, and entertaining as well. You know, Ruben is very uh, wonderful at, at picking holes in our uh, our behaviour and our egos. And and I think with uh, with this character, I really had to try and let go of that and, <laughs> and, and allow myself to be pathetic and. and um, you know, and offer myself up as a piece of meat, and that's a, <laughs> an absurd thing to do, but, uh, you know, in the scenario, it kind of, it's what works, and it's what, uh, it's what gets him forward, so it's, yeah, like Shelby said, it's a part of the, our everyday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have a question in the centre. Hi, um, my name's Dobra from the French media Liloge. Um, a question for Ruben. I, I believe this is your first film that's fully in English, and I was wondering if there was a reason for it. And I also wanted to say that very recently I saw um, a stage version of your film, Snow Therapy in Paris, which I really liked, but I couldn't help regretting uh, it was someone else's adaptation and not yours. Mm -hmm. So is theater writing and directing part of your future plans? Uh, how, how was the theater play? How was the Yeah, theater? it was, how was it? How I was liked Snow Therapy? It. Yeah, I, sorry? I liked it. I, like it. Okay, I liked great. it, but I thought it was yours and then got disappointed when I understood it wasn't. Aha, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, what was the first question? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was wondering if there was a particular reason for this I, film uh, to be in English. <coughs> no, but it was, of course, it's uh, as a director, you want to reach out as much as possible. Even though I'm like, I, I am a little critical that there's such an Anglo Saxon dominance when it comes to cinema and, uh, and uh, like um, and media in general. But uh, uh, I wanted to do something where we like mm, push out even further. And after the Golden Palm, there was a possibility with uh, financiers and so on to do a bigger project. And 
English is my second language. Uh, um, I would love to do uh, a film in French or in German also, but uh, English is my second language. And then uh, the films were also taking place in an environment where, where people speak English with each other. So it, it was a natural step for me to make. And I was nervous about it because I, w I didn't know if I would miss out on the nuances uh, uh, like that I can, can find in the Swedish language. Um, uh, but uh, the actors took such a great responsibility also of the script uh, because as soon as there was something that I felt, they felt that it, mm, I wouldn't say it in that way, they could add, add things and change things and so on. Uh, and what, what was it about the writing? Yeah, sorry. It's future plans about theater writing and directing. My future plans about it. Do you, you do, do, do you want to do theater? Theater. Ah, sorry. Okay. I had sorry. I had an idea of a theater play that I wanted to do in Sweden. There was uh, eight actors that should play monkeys for three hours, and they should be naked on stage all the time. Uh, and uh, but uh, I have still not uh, been able to, to do actors. it. Fine actors. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I would like to yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not who are you in? You're in the yeah, yeah. Oh, it would be fantastic. Alpha, Alpha, Silverback, you know. <laughs> I, I have a question for Vicky. Vicky, I've read that um, Ruben doesn't give his actors, his cast, scripts. So what did he tell you about the part and about what you were to play? Um, what he told me about the, 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 the role? Yes. Well, when I got the, the, the casting in the beginning, it said that my role was 25 years old. I'm not. <laughs> so I didn't think I would get it in the beginning. But uh, Room is cool about that because he looks at types and what, what the actors give him, and then he chooses from that, not from like facts like age. Mm. And he told me that I was... Um, I was going to be very friendly and very likable, but also very tough. And he liked my my um, smile being, what do you call that? Strength. Strained. Yeah, <laughs> strained smile. <laughs> yes. yes, all the time, <laughs> and never saying no. <clears throat> yeah, that's about that's about it. And it's cool to work with Ruben because you get to improvise a lot. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so you you're forming the part with him, and that's that's very unique, I think. Speaking of improvising, according to the press kit, you did an average of 23 takes per shot. What's that like for the actors? It felt like more. <laughs> <laughs> Henrik. Yeah, yeah, uh, when you when you're doing it in a scene where you have lines and acting, I like it very much. But when you're doing it, when you're walking up a hill, or that's yeah. because With I'm lazy, perhaps, or, 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 or dragging a donkey. <laughs> donkey. We had a scene where, where we were dragging the dead donkey across the, the stony beach. <laughs> and then I got a little angry, and, uh, and it was cut. I didn't get angry. Uh, so so th then I don't like 30, uh, 20 retakes. <laughs> but, uh, but I love it when you're doing this scene, when you're acting and, and interacting, mm. because then it's like rehearsing in the theater, mm. but then you can try different things. Do it more, do it more uh, funny, or do it less funny. Do it, do it faster. Do it slower. Try this. Try to b begin crying, and you, and and that's that's a gift to have the time to do it and to examine it, like mm. the social experiments, uh, sociological experiments <laughs> that you're talking about. Can I just tell quickly? Because I. Um, what we do when we do a lot of takes is that <clears throat> first we try to find out exactly how to sculpture the scene. And it, it often gets better up to take 20. You know, like, ah, it's getting better, it's getting better, wow, wow. <laughs> and then somewhere at take 20, it's getting worse. So it's like, oh, fuck, no, it's good. No, no, it's not that good anymore. And uh, then you fight and fight and fight to try to push up the level of the performance and, and uh, intensity in the scene. <clears throat> and if you manage to do that, <clears throat> then you take a break. And then you say, when the actors come back on set, you say, OK, everybody, five takes left. And then you do a countdown. And like, OK, four takes left, come on now. And in the end, when you do the, the last three takes, then the whole team is gathering around the camera, 
everybody's looking at the actors giving them full attention. There's not allowed that someone is standing and scrolling, you know, not giving them attention. And you try to put in some presence, like in, in that moment. It's like, it should be like a football game, and now we're going to win that football game together. And like, very often it's the second last take, or the last take that is, is used in the film. And now in this film I actually brought the gong, gong, you know, like bong, to the, to the shooting. I hate this song. I hate <laughs> so, it. It's so loud. And I then you're like going bong, and then like, action. <laughs> and when you do it then, then it's like, it can be such an intense feeling. And that's, I mean, that's the whole work as a director, to try to capture that and bring that to the, to the screen later on. Yeah. So that's why we're doing a lot, of, I like to do a lot of takes. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. Yeah. It does, obviously. Thank you. We have a question. Where do you go? Oh, hi. A question from Brazil, from Rodrigo Fonseca, J Show. Uh, the first is Mr. Woody Harrison. First of all, thank you for existing. Uh, <laughs> the question is, in what ways do collaborations with non-American directors renew your relation with cinema? And the second question is to Mr. Oslund. Uh, the kind of comedy you make are very particular and incredible, but watching the movie yesterday, I had the sensation that Triangle of Sadness somehow dialogues with some films of Roy Anderson and Aki Kaurismaki. Do you see yourself as part of this family of ironic directors? Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your energy, sir. <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like, I don't know, when you say non-American directors, uh, that's such a general category. I mean, Ruben is very much his own thing. And, uh, you know, it, it really is an exciting... Uh, visceral, profound experience to work with Ruben. I mean, he, he really, uh, you know, he works in a very unique way. He talked about the way he gets energy from the actors, everything from the, you know, he's molding in, in all the takes and he's, you know, using the gong and he, he does everything to, to make the, the performance as great as it can be. So it's really, a revitalizing experience, you know, to come and work with someone like him. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I, I love uh, Kaurus Mackie and Roy Anderson. Uh, and I think uh, Kaurus Mackie and Roy Anderson is very inspired of Tati, Jacques Tati also. So there's a certain kind of family with <clears throat> what I love about them is also this, the simplicity of the situations and uh, the comedy. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not posing, it's very direct and it's uh, very humanistic. Uh, I always feel uh, there's a, um, uh, a warm feeling of how they are treating all the characters and all the scenes, even though they, they deal with horrible things sometimes, the scenes. Uh, no, I love them, I love them. Dolly, I have a question for you. Speaking, Dolly, speaking of doing horrible things, what does Yaya come out of the film alive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been asked that question many times, and I asked Ruben's permission if I can give the, my answer. To me, she dies. Of course, Abigail kills her, of course. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But, but I love you, Shelby. Okay. And I'm Dolly, I'm not Abigail. So. And she kills uh, uh, Yaya exactly the way Yarmo killed the donkey. Exactly that way. <laughs> yeah. But she doesn't cry afterwards. No. <laughs> Don't cry. And, and you didn't have to drag her across the beach. No, I didn't have to. No, no, no. no, no. I just left her there. <laughs> Question in the sem Yes, madam. Hello, Florencia Angeles from WER Radio in Colombia, Mexico. Uh, I don't have a question, but uh, the first one for um, Harris, uh, like a young man, young actor. I love this uh, scene at the, uh, the beginning of all these questions about uh, the, um, the general uh, equality, about uh, if women uh, have to pay or not. I, uh, I would like to know your personal opinion. Uh, about that, mm -hmm. uh, and, um. and uh, uh, from uh, Goody, um, I love the, this personage uh, and the character, sorry, and uh, how did you prepare this scene uh, you know, with, the, um, uh, with the power man of 
uh, a lot of discussion, uh, the philosophy or uh, communists, or uh, if you have uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, any f f phrase, uh, words, so, sorry, uh, to, to this uh, dialogue with him. And, um, and I don't know, I think the, the captain is the only who, uh, the person who, uh, who, uh, who really uh, understands the, the truth, the truth of all the inequality, all this no sense, no, the rich and the, and the poor. And I love, I love this film. It's, it's very, very, very funny, but very cruel, very cruel because uh, uh, at the end, uh, uh, Abigail, uh, he begins uh, also a, a poor woman, but with abuse uh, mm -hmm. of, his, of his power. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I'll quickly answer and then I'll let you go. Woody, that was a big question for you. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess in terms of my own opinion, I think that like, you know, there's certain, I know certain people that love that, uh, the stereotypical gender roles and I know that people are in relationships that enjoy having that, um, you know, uh, whether it's an imbalance or a balance and I know people that uh, are moving in a more, um, you know, uh, equality based, you know, uh, mo modern way. So I, I don't really have uh, anything more to say about that. But what I love about the way Ruben de depicts those scenarios and the way we got to play that is that you really, you know, you get to scrutinise it, but you also get to leave it open to discussion and allow it to be uh, something to uh, explore, you know, rather than just, you know, this is what it should be. And, yeah. Question. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the relate to how I feel about the character, uh, uh, but you know the character's a Marxist. I'm not a Marxist. I'm an uh, anarchist. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so in that sense, we differ. You know, I'm the kind of guy who just thinks it's abominable when a superpower with all this military might, with no provocation, you know, attacks a uh, you know a, a just unprovoked attacks a, a, a country that is, uh, you know, like, like, you know, Iraq, uh, sorry, Afghan, I'm, I'm sorry, Viet, <laughs> Korea, no, sorry, Ukraine. Uh, terrible. Uh, yeah, I lost my way there. Uh, anyway, uh, I love the character. And uh, I do think that in, in a lot of ways he let my character be the voice of some of the message of the film. So that was cool. Glad for a question uh, for you. Do you have any experience with um, oligarchs, Eastern European oligarchs? And what did you, as an Eastern European who grew up under communism, did you have a slightly different take on um, what the film was showing? You think uh, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I use the experience uh, from transition in uh, Yugoslavia from uh, socialist economic uh, to, to uh, wild uh, West capitalism. Uh, and it's, uh, so it's, uh, when I did this character of Dimitri, so I, I knew the, exactly the situations. And, uh, and, I, and the joke is that my friend from... Uh, uh, like a uh, freaky theater and uh, hitchhiker friend, uh, he became a Croatian ambassador in Russian. <laughs> and said when I, and uh, Ruben pushed me really, don't I put a big story, big story. And I, I thought I will <laughs> make a big picture that I put in the paper. I called him, Bosch, do you think it's realistic? They said, yeah, 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 but, but uh, so we had a really, a uh, huge story for Dimitri, everything, how uh, Dimitri earned the first money and uh, first money within the station. We do improvisation about it. It's not in the movie, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's in Dimitri, yeah? yeah. So, uh, it's uh, like a story, yeah. No. If it's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next question, on the left. Hi, uh, my name is Lisa Lotz from London. Um, first, I got a question for Ruben. How did you pitch the script to like producers and um, supporters? Because there's a lot of happening in this movie. So I was wondering what was 
your line and you know to them. And then for the cast, um, whoever wants to answer, um, what were your thoughts when you finally knew what this movie was actually about? Uh, I, I can. I, I think one pitch was like, okay, uh, the film starts in the fashion world. It goes to a luxury yacht, and it ends on a deserted island. Uh, we're going to follow a male and a female model that is a couple through this journey, and we're going to look, see how they use their looks as a currency in these three different environments. Uh, and we're going to have a Marxist captain on the yacht. Uh, played by Woody Harrelson, and then everybody's like, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> and he is going to have the captain's dinner on the, uh, the day when the weather gets rough, so all the passengers will get super seasick, and he will get very drunk together with a Russian oligarch, and they will uh, start playing with the mic system and read from the communistic manifest to this throwing up uh, passengers of the luxury yacht uh, that will uh, uh, even start shitting also, so there will be shit, and there will be throw up, and uh, yeah, and uh, it's going to be the end of the Western civilization. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who, who could resist? <laughs> yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, for the cost, who wants to answer? The cost, yeah. yeah. yeah when I first uh, read, Ruben told me, just like he told you now, mm -hmm. what the movie was going to be about. Uh, and I thought this, this is the shit. <laughs> no, but this is this is this is great. This I I want to see this movie. If I'm not in it, I'm going to see it because I I was blown away by the scope of it and that it starts small and goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that was I haven't seen that before in a in a movie. So it, and, and I like the message as well. Yes, I'm so happy that everybody was like standing behind this socialistic content that we are carrying with the film. So <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Yeah. Dolly, what about you? I think that uh, from my perspective, because I'm Filipina, I am a Filipina, and uh, there are a great majority of overseas Filipino workers who are domestic helpers in other countries. So I felt like the piece was very important that there is a person who has very little advantage, but one day takes over a society, and she's the one in power, and people look up to her and depend on her. So I thought that was very important. And I thought it was really fun to play someone like that. So that, that part alone, I was already sold on it. I, it was, I thought it was a really fantastic idea to bring us up in a place where we normally don't feel like we're in, because we're, we come from underprivileged families, and we're a developing country. <clears throat> Harris. Yeah, I, I would have played the donkey, you know. I wouldn't. Have, I would have, I would have, it's just an honour to be a part of this. And also, like when we, when we, <laughs> I did, fuck you. <laughs> when we were when we were auditioning, like Ruben is so uh, he has such passion and excitement for it, and he also like you, you're a, you're a really great actor as well. Like you you read opposite <laughs> yeah. for all the auditions, and I remember being like, wow, like if he can do all of these parts so well, like what you know how is it going to be directed so it was just like immediate like mm -hmm. excitement from everything you know i think for me obviously working with ruben was already a you're winning you know you're so lucky to already get that opportunity but i thought it was also important to bring a voice to models as silly as that may sound to many but girls and guys travel myself included travel from a really young age i left home at 13 i went to tokyo I was still afraid of the dark. And I was in a city where I didn't speak the language, I didn't know how to get around, and you're forced to grow up really, really quickly. And people may look at you and be like, ah, oh, you know, you're, you're pretty, you're, um, you're vapid, you are, you're not layered, you're not multidimensional. But in fact, there's a hard exterior that you don't really get to know without actually realizing what people in the fashion industry go through. And we get to show that, I think. So thank you for that. What are your own? Oh. Your turn. <coughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, what was the question exactly? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I think I've talked too much already. <laughs> you go. 
Uh, or I go. <laughs> okay. Well, I, what I think was interesting about this movie is it has so many messages, and it speaks to every a different message to every one of us. And I think that was I, I like the equality thing that you have to to think about the hierarchy that treat people nice when you're up, treat people that are lower than you nice. And I, I think that's a great message that we should not treat people we like their shit. <laughs> Speaking like Paula, I, I think that's, uh, I think it's a good message to the world that we shouldn't uh, think that, we should think about equality much more than we actually do. And like for Dolly has a message, for Shelby has a message, and I think everybody who watches this, this movie will will see their own message in it, and I think that's really important. Thank you, mm. Zarko. So if, if the question was what the first impression when we, well, first impression I got, I didn't know the whole script, but the, some scene uh, for casting, Ella, for. Well, and I read it and I said, wow, it's fantastic, you know, how, how this uh, uh, writer know me, you know, that I'm, <laughs> I'm Marxist and I'm socialist all my life and I went a war, so I only, I have this, uh, you know, I, I, I should say this line, no Marxist will come on, all oh, 68, I read it, so I came to the, uh, 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 this meeting, I say, hey, but you are you are Dimitri. What? <laughs> I still understand. I, I expected it's me, <laughs> Captain. It's me. <laughs> so okay. So now I I have to turn. So now I have to be capitalist uh, figure. <laughs> so it was. Uh, so that's it. Turn that way. But it was really fun because when you were you were yeah. taking stop bullshitting, pay taxes. I love that the oligarch is saying this to the to the passenger. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean. It's, it's a joke, but it's really, I, I thought that because I was, oh, no, it's, it's me, you know, now, fuck this uh, show business, now I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but they touched me, you know, it was uh, when the scripts touched me, but uh, for me it's, uh, it's important that it's, uh, at, at film it's, uh, uh, how would you say, the, the old-fashioned uh, has a, a engagement, yeah, but my, f uh, my formative words, uh, years, uh, was in the end of sixties and seventies, and uh, all that uh, uh, in that time, or in this part of, uh, of theater or film, what I been in there or liked, uh, it, it was uh, it was time when uh, people uh, accept uh, uh, tried. To, uh, uh, it was. Uh, it was something uh, wish that uh, art or film or theater uh, uh, important in uh, in the society uh, discussion yeah? and and so so it was like for me it was like uh, uh, some kind of the that we are here in this project that is some line uh, from this uh, uh, kind of active uh, art from 60s and 70s through 80s it's like so we are here with uh, with this film, which uh, uh, I feel it's uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's fun, but it's uh, on another way it's a place for for the, so discussion, yeah? mm. 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 something like that. I'm afraid you all have very busy schedules, and we have no more time. Thank you very much for joining us. All the best. Thank you very much. Uh,